Welcome back. What I want to do in this video is go over the function of a really cool enzyme that is something that you very rarely will hear about, and it's called rhodanese. Rhodanese is sort of the uh, common name for this enzyme. Notice that the suffix of this enzyme is "-ese", not "-ace". So this enzyme is called rhodanese. But in some literature, you'll also hear this enzyme referred to as thiosulfate sulfotransferase, and we'll talk about why that is pretty soon. Um, basically what this enzyme does is two things. Okay, so let me write this down. This enzyme is going to do two things. Number one, it's going to biosynthesize. It's going to biosynthesize something called thiosulfate. Okay, thiosulfate is similar to normal sulfate, although we'll see it has um, several really important differences. And then what it's also going to do is it's going to detoxify, it's going to detoxify hydrogen cyanide. Okay, sometimes it'll just exist as cyanide, but as we'll find, um, in fact, let's do it right now. Basically, hydrogen cyanide is a weak acid. So this guy right here is a weak acid. This is a weak acid, and so you could imagine that if hydrogen cyanide is a weak acid, you could imagine that the equilibrium um, of the dissociation for this acid is going to greatly favor the acid form. So very little of it's actually going to be deprotonated at physiological pH. And so uh, basically what will end up happening is rhodanese, or thiosulfate sulfotransferase, when it gets a hold of hydrogen cyanide, it will get a hold of it in the acid form, which we do call hydrogen cyanide. The enzyme is actually also known to react with anionic cyanide, but in this video we're going to look at the actual mechanism of this enzyme when it reacts with hydrogen cyanide, the acid form. Okay, now before we get into um, the actual part about detoxifying hydrogen cyanide, I want to talk a little bit about the other function of this enzyme, which is to biosyn biosynthesize something called thiosulfate. Okay, so this molecule right here is thiosulfate. In fact, let me blow it up a little bit. Let me draw it a little larger. So in the center you have a sulfur atom, and there are two... Uh, sulfuryl bonds right here and then of course you have this oxygen which has some resonance with the other um, pi electron systems but then instead of having an oxygen over here you have another sulfur atom okay so it looks like sulfate except the oxygen that would normally be present right here is replaced with a sulfur okay so this molecule you call thiosulfate and it turns out that thiosulfate is really critical for detoxifying hydrogen cyanide. Okay, in another video we'll look at the other methods of detoxifying this guy. Uh, it can involve things like myoglobin and um, vitamin B12 and things like that. But first of all, let's talk about how, um, how we can activate the function of rhodanese in terms of making thiosulfate. So it turns out that, and let me scroll over here just so you can see it. It turns out that thiosulfate sulfotransferase, or rhodanese, remember this is the same thing as rhodanese, it turns out that this enzyme is thioredoxin dependent. Okay, so this, this protein that's shown right here, this is called a thioredoxin. Okay, and with thioredoxins, notice um, in the oxidized state, so this is oxidized. You have this, this heterosulfur disulfide bridge, which is shown right here, this heterosulfur disulfide bridge. This represents the oxidized form of thioredoxin. Okay, notice it's a protein. And so what this enzyme is going to do is it's going to take sulfite, not sulfate, but sulfite, and hydrogen sulfide, and it's basically going to, in the process of um, using thioredoxin as the um, oxidizing agent, in other words, this is going to get reduced, um, it's going to make this guy, which is called thiosulfate. Okay? So basically what ends up happening is the sulfur atom, I'll do this in orange so you can see it, the sulfur atom that's part of hydrogen sulfide is what ultimately gets incorporated into thiosulfate. Okay, and the way that um, 
the way that the enzyme gets a hold of thiosulfate when it's detoxifying hydrogen cyanide is either like this or it could be in the deprotonated state. Okay, so either one will work for the mechanism of this enzyme. Okay, so notice that thioredoxin has to start out in the oxidized state. It acts as the oxidizing agent and in the process gets reduced and it takes sulfite and hydrogen sulfide and makes a molecule of thiosulfate. So now that we've got a little bit of insight on how thiol sulfate is made, let's actually look to see how thiol sulfate detoxifies hydrogen cyanide. And just remember, uh, this enzyme has a little bit of leeway as to whether or not it reacts with hydrogen cyanide or just plain anionic cyanide. Okay, And we'll actually look at the mechanism as to how that occurs. Also, it's known that thiol sulfate can be in the protonated state in which the sulfur with the negative charge is protonated, or it can exist as the deprotonated state, fully deprotonated. And either one of those will work for the mechanism of this enzyme. Okay, So hydrogen cyanide, as we've mentioned um, in previous videos, when it gets into the anionic form, you know, it can bind to heme proteins, the heme itself and it can um, disrupt things like the respiratory chain, uh, decrease oxygen carrying capacity, so VO2 max, all sorts of nasty things. So you don't want a lot of cyanide floating around. This is how you get rid of it. Okay, so now we're sort of in the active site of rhodonese or thiosulfate sulfotransferase. And here's the thing. We have these two critical arginine residues in the active site that both start out in the deprotonated state, something we're really not used to seeing. In many cases, arginine is in the protonated state with a positive charge, and that positive charge might be used to stabilize a negative charge. But now we're actually going to see these arginines act as bronsted lowry acids and bases. Okay? And I'll do the mechanistic steps in green. Um, the first step is this arginine right here that's in red is going to deprotonate a critical cysteine residue in the active site. Okay, And when this happens, um, you're going to induce nucleophilic attack of the cysteine thiolate on the sulfur atom of thiosulfate. And that's going to induce loss of a leaving group. So these electrons right here will kick onto the sulfur, and that kicks these pi electrons out onto the oxygen. And of course, you'll have a resonance structure when you get loss of a leaving group, and the leaving group that you lose is sulfite. And you know, you may take one look at sulfite, and you might say, it might be tempting to say, well, that's a trigonal planar molecule. But just remember that. When we got loss of the leaving group, which was the sulfite, when we got nucleophilic attack on the sulfur and we lost sulfite, two electrons ended up on the sulfur atom. So I'll do those in yellow. So two electrons ended up on here. So this is actually not trigonal planar. It's actually going to be a tetrahedral molecule, which is really strange. But just remember that sulfur is one of those atoms that's below... It's below the second period on the periodic table, so it can violate the octet rule. So basically, in this step, we used thiosulfate as a sulfur donor, and we end up with sulfite as the leaving group. And just remember, sulfite is basically, it's two electrons richer than sulfate, okay? So just remember that. So the sulfur atom now here is more reduced, okay? Okay, so now what we have is we have this thioperoxy group that's in the active site. So notice that um, we have this cysteine, but it's in a thioperoxy linkage. So this right here where you have two sulfur atoms like this, this is called a thioperoxy linkage. Let me write that down. This is called a, thio, a thioperoxy group pen's kind of given out on me. Okay, so we have this thioperoxy group. And the next thing that's going to happen is this hydrogen cyanide is going to be allowed into the active site. Now we have this other uh, critical arginine residue in the active site. And so what's going to happen is the other arginine that's in the deprotonated state is, again, going to deprotonate hydrogen cyanide. And then this bond right here, this one that I'm drawing in orange, this bond right here breaks. And so what ends up happening is the effect of cyanide will do a nucleophilic attack on this sulfur of the thioperoxy linkage, and that's going to break this bond that I'm doing in red. So this bond breaks, the thioperoxy linkage breaks, 
and then you get nucleophilic attack on the proton of this arginine and then it regenerates arginine in the deprotonated state. Now one thing I do want to mention because it is very strange and you're probably not used to seeing it and we saw it both in this mechanistic step and the first. Notice that um, you're getting nucleophilic attack on a negatively charged um, atom. That's not something you're used to seeing. Normally, when you think of something that gets nucleophilically attacked, you're thinking of something that might be positively charged in nature, you know, or something that is partially positive. Okay, but this is a strange case where the enzyme actually forces this to happen. So you attack the negatively charged sulfur on the uh, thiosulfate and then you attack this negatively charged sulfur on the thioperoxy group. Okay, And so now what you have is this situation in the active site where now you have uh, arginine with a positive charge, that's the blue arginine. You already have this guy regenerated and then you have your cysteine that's now regenerated again. So now what's going to happen is there's going to be a proton exchange with solution to ultimately regenerate the arginine in the deprotonated state. So just remember, water has two lone pairs, one of which will do a nucleophilic attack on the proton of this arginine, and that's going to regenerate arginine in the deprotonated state. And so what are our final products? Well, our final product that's going to come out of this, which I didn't draw, is going to be this. And I'll do it in a bold color. Let me do yellow. So you're going to have nitrogen still in a triple bond with carbon, but now the carbon, notice what happened here. The effective electrons on this carbon did a nucleophilic attack on the sulfur anion of the thioperoxy linkage. So now we have, let me do this in green, typically sulfurs are done in green. You have this sulfur now with a negative charge, right? And this molecule, let me circle it in purple, this molecule that we've now synthesized, this is called, this is called thiocyanate. This is called thiocyanate. And it's a fairly polar charged molecule. And it turns out that this molecule can be excreted. So this molecule can be excreted. So if you were ever wondering, what happens to cyanide in your body, this is effectively one of the fates. Eventually, rhodonese or thiosulfate sulfotransferase will eventually get a hold of cyanide in the protonated form usually, and it will do this reaction and transfer a, a sulfur with a negative charge onto the cyanide, and then this molecule right here can be excreted as thiocyanate. Okay, nothing further as far as anybody knows happens to thiocyanate, it's just, just excreted. Okay, so I hope this video gave you a little bit of intuition on part of the mechanism of detoxification of of cyanide or hydrogen cyanide. In the next video, we're going to look at some alternate methods to sort of grab a hold of cyanide and hold it until this enzyme can react with it. See you in the next video.